Hey guys, welcome to Render Rides. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at how you can optimize your scenes properly to showcase your models better. And when it comes to that, the most important part is lighting. So let's learn how to light our scenes properly so that people can really see how cool our models are. But before we get into that, I want you to subscribe to this channel. Yes, it is kind of weird to be asking to subscribe right away, but you can unsubscribe if you think the video sucked. So yeah, subscribe. All right, let's get into it. So I made this model a few days ago using Blender and Substance Painter and I made a few renders of it using Eevee. The reason I wanted to start with this example is because this is probably the most common and easy way to showcase your model because it's just hovering in midair with some random lights to make it look cool. But the placement of these lights were done in a way that emphasizes the textures on the model. The placement of the lights in your scene will depend on what quality of the model you want to showcase, whether it is the details of your modeling, the shape of the object or the materials, or the textures. So if for example you want to show your texturing work like what I have here, You'd go for a more dramatic lighting to really show all the details instead of a straight light facing directly towards the model from the camera angle. And if you want to show a hard surface model and emphasize on the details, you'd use a lighting that creates a lot of shadows to emphasize the crevices and the bumps on the model. Let's delete all the lights in the scene and start from scratch. Now before we start, we want to have an idea about the parts of the model that we need the most emphasis on. And I know that I want to emphasize the areas around the metal parts here and a little around the horn as well. Then I would want a little more focus around the tone holes and the end of the pepa. It is also really helpful to have multiple cameras with different angles if you're planning to post the renders on your portfolio to show different parts of the model closely. The composition also plays a huge role when it comes to emphasis, but first let's focus on placing the lights. We want to put our first camera in the scene just to preview what it's actually gonna look like as we're adding the lights. Okay, now it would be easier for us to understand where we want our lights. So let's add a big area lamp and set the color to white and the intensity to 500 watts since our model is over 16 meters in length. This will be our main ambient light which will roughly light everything from one side. We can duplicate this over to the other side and tweak the intensity a little to fill that area out and perhaps even make it a little bigger. Now this should do just fine. I usually use a lot of accented lights to guide the viewer to certain parts of the model so I generally use lights with shades of orange and blue on the opposite sides of the model since these colors are on the opposite side of the spectrum they really contrast each other and when you want emphasis you want contrast. So it was the same with this model. I used an orange light coming in from the front bottom shining on the metal as such instantly guiding the viewer's eyes to that part of the model. It is also very helpful to know a little bit of composition when placing your camera and lights so that you have a rough theory of where the viewers will be more attracted towards. Which according to the rule of thirds are these points of intersection. So I roughly try to position my camera in a way that complements this theory of rule of thirds. So I basically place the camera so that they look more at these parts of the model. You also need to keep in mind that you don't strictly need to stick with this idea. It's okay to break the rules. Anyway, now you should have a better idea of why placing an accented light near that part helps with the composition and maybe even with the story and mood of the image as well. Now we can clearly see that the front area of this model is really dark and even if we're going for a super high contrast look, we still want a little bit of light to ease it up a little bit. So what I did in this case was to just add another big ass area lamp pointing at that part but it's blue in color to complement the orange light. Of course the colors really depend on what you're going for but in this case it makes perfect sense. Now another dark part in the model is the inside of the horn right here and that's pretty straightforward to fix if you think about it. If you're not going for realism, which is certainly the case here, you could just add some low intensity little point lights to light it up just a bit but not so much that it ruins the dark look for us. Again, I use the same orange and blue colors for them to contrast them. Now we're getting somewhere. Something I like to do which a lot of people like to do as well is to just add some lights to separate the object from the background. The way I did it is by using an aerial lamp at the back right here so that it makes a nice little rim on the model. This is perfect. Almost. If you want more renders of this model from different angles, we might run into an issue like this with close-ups where there isn't a lot of contrast to show your awesome texturing work. Well then, you could just use another light with a contrasting color accent as that sweet final touch. And it also helps you to see more of the textures. Would you look at that? That's looking incredibly sexy. 
You successfully lighted this model, but what about other, more different models? Well, if you ever need to showcase a model in a fancy way, remember these key points. Lighting, composition, and atmosphere. We already have discussed about lighting and composition. If you want a more in-depth understanding of them, I highly recommend watching the lighting series by Blender Guru, which goes over these things in an extremely comprehensive way. So lighting, composition, these things are important, but so is the atmosphere of the scene. You could include the mood, the feeling of the scene in the atmosphere category. While there's nothing wrong with showcasing a model in a blank background, you could take the next step and be a little extra creative by making a full scene with the, your model as the focus. For example, the model I have with me is the Peppa, which is a cultural instrument of the Assamese people. So I could probably make a scene with a bunch of other traditional instruments together, or simply with a Gamusa or any other complementary model that respects the story that I'm trying to tell about the Assamese culture. Now with that said, let's take a look at another example. Now this is another one of my projects that I also made a video about. You can check it out right here. You can get this project on Gumroad, link is in the description. I wanted to use a free model for this example, but we're having some network issues here, so I can't access the internet even if I tried to. So yeah, I'm sorry, but we, we just have to roll with this one. So essentially, this scene has this gigantic model of a portal, which is the main focus of the scene. But I presented it in a whole scene with a good atmosphere that complements the story that I'm trying to portray. If I had put like a few people going into the portal or something, it would have been more awesome, but you know, time constraints. And I'm pretty sure my laptop couldn't have handled it anyway. Okay, now if we break down the lighting of this scene, we just have an HDRI for the main lighting with a little bit of tweaking. And we have some volumetrics going on with a tiny, tiny bit of emission to imitate the fog. That's about it. Other than that, we have this portal gate with a bright emissive material which contributes some lighting on the ground in the final composite. Even when it might look very scary at first, it has the most simple lighting with just an HDRI. And it works phenomenally well with these big scenes and also gives a very realistic lighting without having to set up a bunch of unnecessary lights to try and replicate the look of real life lighting. Now you might be wondering where you could actually get these HDRIs and you can actually get a whole bunch of free HDRIs over at HDRI Haven which is my go-to website. I'll leave the link in the description. Now that's all I wanted to discuss in this video. If you're ever stuck with lighting something, you could hopefully refer to this video and get some help. If not, you could always comment on what problems you have and I'll be there to help you. And if you want to support this channel to keep making more stuff, you could head over to my Patreon page in the description and don't any amount you see fit and also get all of my projects along with it or you could take a look at my gumroad page where i have the arctic scene available for download hey and if you have made it this far thanks a lot for your time i hope you enjoyed watching this video leave a like if you did subscribe for more content like this and i'll be back in the next video